Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Japan and we're going to have a look at another brewery who I have never tried anything from before. So for this one then we are going to go to Nara City in Nara Prefecture, a bit out to the east of me here in Osaka and we're trying my first beer from Nara Machi Craft Beer, which translates into English literally as Nara Old Town Beer. This particular beer is called the Haku Weizen, and it comes in at 5.5% ABV, so a little bit stronger, if memory serves me correctly, than some of the German Weizens that you're going to come across. So, um, yeah, I'm really curious to see how this one turns out. As I've told you before, um, a lot of the little Jibiru breweries here in Japan are very German influenced. The, the Weizen and all the different types of wheat beer that you can get, these are very, very popular over here. And quite often you'll find these little Jibiru breweries brewing things like Kulsch, uh, Alt Beer. Weitz and sometimes Hellas and Dunkel and sometimes you even get like Mybox and Bot beers and things like that as well. I think it's probably fair to say that there are more different Kulshis over here and Alt beers than there are in either Köln or Dusseldorf itself. You know, they're very, very into their German beer styles over here. But some of the Weizens can be very, very nice. Two very good examples that spring to mind from here in Japan would be the Fuji Sakura Heights Weizen. He's, you know, the, the guy over there is excellent at producing those beer styles. Um, you also have uh, the Weizen from Kurofune, Shuzu, uh, Kurofune, is it Shuzo or Brewery? I forget, but these guys down in Hiroshima, the Black Boat Brewery, are very, very good at the style as well. So, um, yeah, a very popular beer style here in Japan, so if you get the chance to try some of the little Jibiru breweries over here, check out some of their Weizen beers. Some of them are very, very good actually and hopefully this is another good example of uh, a Japanese brewed Weizen. So very curious to try this one and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. The brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I'll do from Naramachi Craft Beer. I do have one more of their beers to review just now and hopefully you can see more in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is that takes your fancy. You can check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for the Japanese beers. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is huge. Hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Naramachi Craft Beer then, on to my brewery notes. So Naramachi Craft Beer, as I mentioned to you earlier, are based in the old town area of Nara and the brewery opened up back in March of 2017. So still quite a new brewery. And they're actually just round the corner from Harushika Shuzo, which is a very famous old sake brewery. And I was in the sake brewery and they, I was talking to them about my YouTube channel. And they said, oh, there's a beer brewery just round the corner from here. Make sure you go and check that out. So I did, and then I got two bottles from them as well, which is always good. Um, but the main man behind this brewery is Masayoshi Aoyama. He's originally from Tenri City, and he had trained as a brewer for two years at Kibido Brewery in Okayama, which is a bit further south of uh, Nara and things. It's kind of closer to Hiroshima, actually. But he decided basically that he wanted to bring craft beer to Nara to kind of uh, integrate that into the sake heritage of the city. A lot of people consider Nara to be the uh, the home of Japanese sake. It's very famous for its temples and things like that, of course. Nara was the very first capital city of Japan, dating back to like 700 and something. So very long time ago. Um, but these guys have a small brewery on site. By the looks of it, it was around, you know, maybe four or five hundred litres at most, but it was beautiful old copper kettles or uh, copper cladding and things on the kettles there. But this supplies their restaurant, and the restaurant that you'll go into is called Mugia, and this serves Italian-style food, but with local Nara ingredients. And as of January 2020, when I'm uh, producing this video for you, these guys have made around 20 different types of beer. They've got three of them in the bottles, um, the Weizen, the Stout, and I think it's a Paleo that they have as well or an IPA, I can't remember, but that was the red labelled one. Um, this one, the Weizen's obviously the white label, the Stout is the black label and the Paleo is the red label. But they do have other beers that you'll find um, 
only on tap and things like that. They had uh, Imperial Stouts, they had uh, a double IPA and things like that. And you will only find these beers available on tap in the brewery for the moment. Uh, maybe that will change at the time you're viewing this video. So go and check them out if you get the chance. Their bar actually was a really kind of lovely uh, modern Japanese kind of thing. I thought it was very, very nice. So, um, yeah, that's all I'm really able to tell you about Naramachi Craft Beer, Nara Old Town Craft Beer. Um, if you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook. I think it's Instagram they're more active on, though. That'll keep you up to date with all the latest goings on at the brewery. And, of course, you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see more information about all the beers that these guys have produced. So, um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer, then. So, um, yeah, I think this one, when I bought it, it cost me around 500 yen. So that's, like, what, £3.50, maybe about 4 euros or something like that. Um, I don't know how what that would be in US dollars, maybe about four dollars, something like that. Beer in Japan, of course, is a little bit pricey because of the old malt taxes and things. I have to say I do like their um, their bottle caps that they have on this. Um, but there you can see Nara Beer established back uh, in 2017. So um, yeah, Haku Weizen. Um, and you've got the kanji for that on the front of it as well, coming in at 5.5% ABV. Uh, so, yeah, should be quite nice. And it says that this one is best before the 4th of June 2020. So, um, yeah, without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste. And I'm very curious to see how this beer turns out. Nice little bit of smoke on the opening and we'll get it out and into the glass. So, as I said to you, Wheat beers, Weizen's, Weizen box and things like that. Very popular beer styles over here in Japan. I think originally, back in the day, it was the Germans who really taught the Japanese to brew. Because up until, uh, was it 1996, um, you know, most of the first craft breweries opened up in the, night, in the, the kind of mid to late 90s. And um, a lot of that was because there was laws that um, stopped breweries producing anything less than 2 million litres of beer per year. You know, small breweries are just never, ever going to be able to do that, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, a lot of these little breweries popped up in the late 90s. Quite a few of them died off. And uh, the ones that survived have gone on to do very, very well. The likes of Fuji Sakura, um, Shiga Kogan, Isakado, yeah, Mino, and uh, there's plenty of other ones that I've maybe not heard of yet because as I've told you before Japanese products are very very regional and difficult to get a hold of in some cases but um, yeah just look at this in terms of a Weizen there's nothing really surprising about this it's a lovely kind of hazy bright yellow colour you can see there's a solid two-third finger of a frothy perfect white head on this one one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of the head there but you know overall it looks pretty much as you would expect from uh, from a Hefeweizen beer, so nothing overly surprising about it. Let's have a look at the aroma then and see how we get on. That smells pretty nice actually. So yeah, straight away with this one, you get a lovely smooth wheaty quality out of it. Definitely that typical kind of banana uh, and sort of clovey note that you get out of Hefeweizen's too. To me, this one comes across as having quite a little bit of that bubblegummy candy sort of note in it as well, which is, is really quite nice. To me, this is one of the sweeter Weizen's that I can remember coming across in recent times. But as it stands, you know, it's it actually the aroma. This one's very pleasant and very inviting. So, I mean, you can't ask for much more. As I say, the white, bready, wheaty quality in this comes across as being very smooth. The bananas are just sort of integrated into it. They're not overly pungent, if you like. Um, you can smell the clovey spices kind of adding a little bit of complexity to it also. And you've got some nice um, bubble gummy candy notes in there too. But in terms of the, uh, the hoppy side of things, you know, it's typical sort of German noble type hops in this. You've got a little teeny bit of earthiness in there. The floral notes for me are quite bright so I would wonder if maybe they're using a little bit of a slightly stronger alpha acid hop rather than the Hallertau and the Tetnanger. The Hallertau and Tetnangers if I remember correctly are sort of 5% alpha acid but you've got Pearl which I think is around 6 um, and you've also got the, uh, what's, the name's gone right out of my head now, you've got the Hercules rather, which I think is around 8% alpha acid, so maybe they're using one of the slightly stronger German hops in this one. It could even be that they're using you know, an American or a New Zealand hop 
or something like that in this beer as well because the fruity notes I have to admit are quite nice I have to say um, so yeah but the green side of the hops for me leans towards that floral side of things you definitely get some grassiness out of it as well but mainly it's a nice big smooth malty and floral um, it's a nice big floral um, IPA this one so um, yeah keep that in mind with this beer I think it's, it's the aroma of this one is really very very nice on the fruity side of things then for me as I said you get the banana notes which are mainly coming from the yeasty side the yeast can contribute a hell of a lot to the flavour of a beer um, and the aroma of a beer as well but on the hoppy side of things I think there is a little bit of that kind of typical grassy lemon limey citrusy zest kind of thing out of this but I think it's got a little bit of like papaya or mango or something like that there's definitely a little tropical element coming out of this uh, this Hefeweizen so I wouldn't be surprised if there is a little bit of like American or Australian or New Zealand a bit of New World hop in this one basically um, because there is just that little bit of you know like mangoey papaya and, uh, and stuff like that I mean it could have just a little I don't think I don't know if it's citra it could have a little dash of citra or something in it like that um, but again, some of these fruity notes, they might just be coming from the yeast because the you know the Hefeweizen is a fairly yeast-focused style. I believe in the malt base, it's something like 40% um, wheat malt they put in it and 60% pale malt, and then they play around with the other stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, the aroma of this one is very nice, very pleasant and, uh, and inviting. So yeah, impressed with it so far. So let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Hakuweizen. Uh, from Nara Machi Beer, some lovely deers on there as well. You see the uh, the deers walking around Nara in the park. They take anything out of your hand because they think they're getting fed. But um, yeah, a lovely look, a lovely smelling Hefeweizen, Hakuweizen at 5.5% from Nara Machi Craft Beer in Nara here in Japan. So um, yeah, let's get stuck into this one and see how we get on. Slanja, Skull, Kampai. Sorry about the edit there guys, as I was saying, this um, Weizen comes across as really clean and very crisp and drinkable, in my opinion, that's the main first impression that I have of this one. So yeah, it's a very, you know, I've told you about this with Japanese craft beer before, quite often you'll get quite a full flavoured beer but it will be very very crisp and lighter in its mouthfeel. I mean when you consider how kind of hot Japan is as a country you can kind of understand that. To the Japanese as well beer is supposed to be light, crisp and drinkable and that's often reflected in a, in a number of these little Jibiru breweries and you can really feel this, it's very full flavoured but it does have that degree of crispness to the um, to the mouthfeel which is, is really quite nice actually So yeah, this one I would say, it's definitely not the thickest of Weizens that you're going to come across. But it's got a nice, it has got a nice um, flavour to it, this one. I have come across thicker ones in Japan as well, actually. Um, but yeah, let's try and break down the flavour of this beer then and see how we get on. So straight away, in the middle of your palate, you can feel that nice um, kind of white bready wheaty quality that blankets the middle of your tongue and when you go into the center of the palate you can feel the yeasty characters just kind of thickening up a little bit and the further you go into the aftertaste you'll start to get the more um, kind of banana -y and and sort of clovey spice notes coming out of this one which is pretty nice if you go to the front corners of your palate and then move in a little bit I think there's a little tiny um, woody undertone to this one which is quite nice. Um, for me as well, when you go further forward on the palate, it gets a little bit more kind of candied and things. So it's um, it's quite um, it, it does have that real kind of bubble gummy element to it. Yeah, this one to me really is quite candied further forward on the palate. Um, it's, it's one of the more candied Weizens that I've come across here in, in Japan actually when I think about it. It really starts to lean towards that the further that you go into the aftertaste in my mind. So that's that's kind of an interesting point to make about this one. But in the um, on the hoppy side of things then, 
in the back corners of the palate, a little tiny touch of earthiness in there. It's that typical, slightly sweet German um, noble earthiness, if you like. But as you come further forward along the sides of the palate, it gets a little bit more herbal. There's a little touch of floral aromaticity on the front corners of the palate. It's not where, it's not anywhere near as prominent as you might think from the aroma. But then again, generally, pardon me, the Hefeweizen as a style is not the hoppiest of, uh, of beer styles. You do get Hopfenweizens and things like that these days, which are becoming more popular in Japan. But the, the, old, the old school Hefeweizen, if you like, is not really a very hoppy beer at all. Um, but round the very front curve of the palate, this one is a little bit lighter and more grassy, I would say. And the, the fruity esters of this beer come out in that little oily bubble behind the front curve of the tongue. So, um, yeah, let's have a little look at the, the fruity side of things now then. So yeah, this one for me, the fruity side of things, it's quite, um, <coughs> took some of that down the wrong way, um, it's quite, you definitely get the banana notes from the yeast like I was saying, but for me the fruity side of this beer, it's quite, um, you've got a little bit of that typical sort of lemony grassy zesty thing on the very front tip of your tongue, but when you go behind that, you, some of the banana notes are spreading forward of course, but it's got a little touch of like a papaya, apricotty type thing as well, and you might also get some kind of peary esters out of this beer as well. Um, so in terms of its fruitiness, it is pretty typical of a, of a Hefeweizen. I mean, I think the tropical notes, um, some might consider that a little bit unusual, but it comes across as a very smooth, kind of malty um, beer, this one. Uh, and it's, it, it really, you know, as you would expect from a Hefeweizen, it leans mainly towards the malts, but the fruity side adds a nice little bit of complexity to it, and it's definitely one of the more kind of candied and slightly sweeter Weizens that I've come across, even here. Um, in Japan actually, and when I think about the German ones as well, I would definitely say that. So um, yeah, it's it's an interesting one this. Have a go at it for yourself and see what you think. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel, as I said, this beer to me is very light and very crisp. It's lighter than a lot of Weizens I've had, I would definitely say that. So, yeah, very, um, you know, I would say that this beer, it's at the top end of light-bodied, bottom end of mid-bodied. The carbonation is quite crisp in this one. Overall, I'd say it has quite a wet mouthfeel. Usually you expect your Weizens to just be that little bit thicker, to be honest with you. You do expect them to have a little bit more body, but as I've told you before, the Japanese beers, they do tend to be a bit lighter and crisp in their mouthfeel. The Japanese value drinkability when it comes to beer. But uh, the malt base in this one has a good degree of smoothness, it's also got a little bit of sweetness. The further you go into the aftertaste of this one, you'll feel more of the candied sweeter esters coming out of this one, or the, the candied sweet um, notes, the sort of bubble gummy flavours coming out of this one. But otherwise the malt base is very smooth. You've got a nice little touch of hoppy bitterness. I would say that this one is around 15... Um, you know, it's, it's maybe about 15, 20 IBUs at most if you're lucky. I think usually the standard bitterness for these guys is around 15. Um, so yeah, probably it's definitely somewhere around that, which is what you'd expect. And you've got a nice little bit of a juicy, fruity ester to this one, both coming from the yeast and also coming from the hops as well. So um, yeah, an interesting vice in this one. Definitely one of the lighter and crisper ones that I've come across. And some people will like that. Some people like the flavour of Hefeweizens, but they find them very, very heavy. I find um, German Weizens very heavy. I can only ever drink one at a time. So this is a nice kind of light and crisp alternative, I would say. Definitely one of the sweeter, more kind of candied feeling, um, candied leaning Hefeweizens that I've had here in Japan. So um, yeah, an interesting one this, and definitely uh, cool to review another new brewery for you here on the channel. So I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this one. It's been cool to uh, review one of their beers for you here on the channel. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this. This one was the Haku Weizen coming in at 5.5% from Naramachi Craft Beer in Nara City, in the old town of, uh, of Nara in Nara Prefecture, just out to the east of me here in Osaka in Japan. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Naramachi Craft Beer as well, and hopefully 
I can return to these guys at some point after my next review in the fairly near future. So until the next time, check out my social media, check out Naramachi Craft Beer, and I'll catch you guys very soon. This one was the Haku Weizen at 5.5% from Naramachi Craft Beer, Nara Old Town Beer, and Nara Nara Japan. Slanja, Skull, Kampai, make sure you check out this little brewery. Cheers.